I am so excited to talk to you about volumes of prisms and cylinders. So a rectangular prism is basically a shoebox, right? So when someone says rectangular prism, just think shoebox. A cylinder is like a toilet paper roll. Um, and so the way you find the volume of a rectangular prism is you basically take the area of this rectangle, which you know is, you know, length times width or one times four, and then you multiply it by the height, which is two, All right? So you're, the one times four is giving you this, and then the times two is basically layering that up several times to fill the whole shape, All right? So it's area times height. Keep that in mind because that's going to be the same principle for for cylinders, right? So one times four is four, four times two is eight, and we have eight cubic kilometers. That's a big amount of space. So the premise is the same, right? We can, we can take this area, which is two times three or six, and we can take this height, which is one, and say six times one is six. And when you deal with volumes, you have this three on the top because it's cubic, six cubic inches. Okay, now you're gonna start taking shortcuts and just be like, okay, Neil, stop drawing all these pictures. I'm just multiplying three, four, and five. Okay, that's fine. I accept that. So that's, I'm gonna do five times four first because that's easier, right? Order of multiplication doesn't matter, it's commutative. 20 times three gives me 60. So 60 cubic inches. Okay, now let's explain why uh, this is, you know, this is what it is, why this formula is. So when you take the volume here, you wanna take the area of this circle, right? Which is pi r squared, that's a formula we know, right? So what is that, right? That's pi times four, so, this is four, right? So the radius is two. So pi times two times two. So that's four pi. And then you have to multiply it by the height. Right, so you have to multiply that by six. Same thing, area of the base times height, right? So it's four pi times six or 24 pi. Now we might need a calculator, but we don't really. I mean, you could you could pull out a calculator, I assume, right? But 24 times what's pi? It's around 3.14, right? So we can do 24 times. So first of all, let me let me summarize, right? So the volume is of the cylinder is pi r squared. H, I do the picture to explain all that stuff. We can just use the formula if we want. So this is pi times two squared times six, which is 20, so four times six is 24 pi. So we know that. And now we do 24 times 3.14. So we do three, one, four times 24. I'm gonna start taking shortcuts here because otherwise getting to the end of all the problems will take too much time. So four times four is 16. Four times one is four. So I put the one here. So that'll be five. And then four times three is 12. Then we have eight, we have two, and we have six. So we have, did I write, this isn't, yeah, this is a zero. So we end up with six 
3. When I add these together, that's 13. There'll be a little 1 here, so that'll be 5. 7. And then I used, I, I moved, I like, right, there are two decimal points here that I ignored, so I have to put the two decimal points there. So it's going to be 75.36. I wanted to do that one exactly, but we, we won't always do it exactly. We'll just estimate it in our head so we can save some time. Okay. Um, so, and maybe the numbers are so close that we can't estimate it. Okay. So what is it? It's pi r squared h for the volume of the cylinder. So the r here is 2. So it's pi times 2 squared times 6. So this is pi times 4 times 6, or 24 pi. And we just did this one, right? 24 pi. What was the answer? Was it 75.36? I just don't want to do it again. I think it was. Okay, cool. Um, how about this? So we've got pi times r squared h. So this will be pi times 3, because the radius is half of the 6, squared h, 6, so that's 3. So it'll be pi times 9 times 6, which will give me 54 pi. Now to ballpark it, if this is just around 3, this whole thing will be around 150 plus 12 is 162. So we know it's got to be bigger than 162. That rules out that rules out stuff. And it's just a little bit bigger than 162 because it's 3 is pretty close to 3.14. So it's going to be 169.56. We can save ourselves some time. OK, how about this? Um, so we've got pi times the radius here is 1, r squared height which is 5, so it's just going to be 5 pi. And again, with our trick, 5 times 3 is around 15. And now there really are two acceptable answers, right? 15.7, 16.6, they're kind of close, so we're going to just have to do it out, right? So it's 5 times pi. So 5 times, so 3, 1, 4 times 5. 3, 1, 4 times 5, which will give me 20. That will give me 7, because there's the 2. And this will give me 15. So it should be 15 point, and then we have the two decimal places, right? So 15.7. Okay. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. So now, what is the volume of this, this triangular prism? Right, so we've got five, five, and one. So there's a really interesting fact here, right? So if you, yeah, I mean, there's another way of thinking about this, right? Which is, let's take the area of this triangle. What's the area of this triangle? It's one half base times height, which is five halves. And then we have to multiply that five halves by five, right? Because we have to get each of these triangles accounted for along the way. So we have to do five halves times 5, which is 25 halves, or 12.5. So we know the answer is 12.5. Let me summarize. For this, it's going to be the area of the triangle, so 1 half 
base times height times this length, right? So we got 12.5 in this case. Okay, so what was our formula, right? It was 1 half base times height, where we're talking about this triangle, times the length. So the base here is 2, so 1 half times 2 times 5 times 4. These cancel out. We should just get 20. The other way you can think about it, guys, is you can just be like, oh, it's basically just half a rectangular prism. So I just take the rectangular prism and I, I divide it by 2. So what do you do there? You just do 5 times 4 times 2 divided by 2. Right? That's a shortcut. But I wanted to show you where it's coming from. So 20. But if you just want to get the answer, which you know most of the time you do, um, you can just take these three numbers multiply them. So 5 times 2 times 1 is 10, and then divide by 2 and get 5. All right. I love dealing with the shapes. I hope you had fun too. I will see you next time.